the undefeated prospect slash sensation, Sean Brady, 14-0, going up against the vet, Michael Chiesa, who's kind enough to join us right now via the Magic of Zoom. So let's go back to Las Vegas and say hello to Michael Chiesa, who's in his car. Where are you going, Mike? <laughs> Well, you can blame this one on Danny Roof. He scheduled my uh, part of my medicals this morning, so I'm, huh. in, uh, I'm in the suburban headed, oh back my from, uh, gosh. headed back to the hospital. Oh, everything okay? <laughs> Danny Roof. Oh, yeah, everything's good. Just finishing off my medicals for the fight. Do you know how many times I checked in with Danny to make sure that this was good for your schedule, Joanne's schedule right before another client? The guy doesn't go to her wedding. He messes this up. What a month. That's what I'm saying, but... But on the tail end of Joanne's wedding at the reception, you did see that somebody dressed up as Danny Rubin showed up to the reception, right? Yes, yes. His significant other. Why does no one want to actually call her what she is? I'm, uh, is this like a thing on the down low? Am I not supposed to talk about this? <laughs> <laughs> I have no idea. You can sort that out with him. Okay, all right. I'm about to get a text in like 14 oh, seconds okay. from him. Um, well, good to talk to you, my friend. Uh, oh, lots yeah. to talk to you about. And by the way, thanks for rocking the Heelwani shirt a few weeks ago. I'm sure you were stopped by a lot of people, people asking you where you got that, right? Absolutely. And I said, you know where to find him. Just hit him on the uh, <laughs> hit him on the gram. I'm sure he's got a link in his bio. That's right. That's right. <laughs> I appreciate you doing that. We're showing a picture of you rocking it right now. Uh, so thank you very much. Big fight for you, Mike. Uh, it feels like this is a fight where a lot of people, you know, I looked at the odds. You're the underdog. You're the underdog against Sean Brady. How do you feel about that? Do you feel like when am I? When am I not? When am I not the? When am I not the underdog? I, I swear, I am the underdog almost every fight, and that's fine. I re, I relish the role of being an underdog. So, uh, you know, on the tail end of that last fight, Ariel, you know, I can understand, but I'm not a mathematician. I'm not in here to crunch the hard numbers. I'm just in here to get a fist fight. So, get a fist fight in before the end of the year. Uh, yeah, I don't know. All right, so what what happened the last time we saw you? Um, we saw you against Vicente Luque. The Zoom is kind of uh, catching up to us now. Are you still there? You still there, Mike? Okay, now I think we're good. Yeah, yeah? I'm still, okay. I'm here. Yeah. Um, you cool. fought you fought Vicente Luque. Yeah. It's it's a little laggy. What should we do, guys? Should we call him back? It's just uh, it's getting all chopped. Maybe we just do phone. Should we just do phone? Let's try now. I'll try you now. Get on my end. Yeah, yeah. Okay, let's try now. Um, okay. You look back on that fight. Big fight for you. It felt like you were really close to getting what you wanted, the title shot. What went wrong against Luque? Uh, you know, I had a phenomenal camp. Everything was going great. And I just, just in the heat of the moment, I got into that position a lot faster than I thought I would. And... Uh, just kind of strayed away from what got me into that position was just kind of dominating fights, taking my time, you know, really working to get these finished or just dominating guys. And I think that for me, it was just a mental lapse in the heat of the moment. I just got to his back so fast and just my mind was like, go for the finish, go for the finish, you know, put a stamp on this fight. And that's a big gamble when you're going against a guy as tough as Vicente Luque. I mean, we know how durable he is, uh, you know, and I just thought, in the heat of the moment, I had that mental lapse. Like, I'm going to be the guy to finish him and solidify my spot. And the gamble almost paid off. We'd, we'd be having a different conversation right now, Ariel. If, they, if, they, if the gamble paid off, which I was very close to to cashing out on that bet, I guess you could say. Uh, I feel like we're talking about a lot of betting and odds yeah. right now. But if I, if I cashed out on that bet and won, we'd be having a different conversation right now. But it didn't pay off. Um, and that's something that I have to live with. So, you know, now it's... It's all about the, the road to get back into that position. And it starts with Sean Brady. Um, I know that this is a big gamble. When you look at the landscape of this division, you got the Sean Brady's, you got the Hamza Chemayevs, you got the Shavkat Rachmanovs, you got these tough, undefeated prospect guys. I got to I gotta fight these guys to give them their shot, but it's also the, it's to solidify my position that I'm still the guy. I'm still the guy. I'm still the guy that belongs at the top of this division. And, and I got to start with with putting a stamp on this fight on Saturday. I'm going to go out there. I'm going to beat up Sean Brady. I'm going to get the win, and I'm going to move on and get back get back into that contention position that I was just in back in back in August. There are some people though who are in your exact spot who say like, I don't want to fight the undefeated Sean Brady type. I you know I want to fight someone who's been around as long as I have, etc. Were you hesitant to take this fight? 
No, I wasn't hesitant at all. Look, when you get a when you get on a nice little win streak in the UFC, the more fights you win, the more political it gets. Mm-hmm. And uh, you know, coming up short, I'm not here to lobby for different matchups or say yes to this guy, say no to that guy. I've never said no to a fight my entire nine year tenure with the UFC. And when they call, I say yes. And so when they call with Sean Brady, there was no hesitation to fight this guy. Um, and, and the good thing is being in the position I'm in with what I'm doing outside of the octagon, all the analyst work and stuff, I already have the drop on him. I already have the notes on him in my phone, you know, from when I was studying his fights for the death show. So I knew what I was getting into and, and uh, I know what I'm getting into on Saturday. So I'm really excited for this matchup. Um, there was no hesitation to take this fight. I want to test myself against a guy like Sean Brady, especially after how things went my last fight. You know, I, I, I got submitted. I'm a submission specialist. I got to go out there and write that wrong. And I feel like I can do that by going out and fighting a guy like Sean Brady, who's an exceptional black belt. He's from a great school. Uh, you know, he's got great submission skills. He's a well-rounded fighter. So I feel like I can write that wrong by going out and getting a win on Saturday. I, I love the way you handled the loss. I mean, you got right out in front of it and, and you wrote something very honest and sincere on uh, on social media. Internally, behind the scenes, you know, as you said, the way in which you lost and how good you were looking leading up to that point, how big that fight was, how, you know, how difficult was it? How long did it take for you to get over it? Uh, you know, it didn't really take long. If I hadn't have booked the fight, you know, right after, after, right afterwards, I think that I would kind of still be marinating on that. But that was why I wanted to get back in there so soon. Because I just, I didn't want to sit and dwell on that loss so soon. It, you know, it, yeah, it was a few weeks uh, of really just kind of being down on myself and really just kind of harping on myself for that game time decision I made to go for that finish so fast without taking my time. And really, you know, the, one of the number one rules in jujitsu, Ariel, is, you know, position before submission. And I went for that submission without securing the position. I really harped on myself about that. Something I've known from day one, I strayed away from it, which I harped on myself for a long time about it, just for a few weeks. But once they called me with a fight, it's been so. That was a big part of the reason why I wanted to get back in there. So if I didn't book a fight right afterwards, I'm just going to sit and dwell on it. And that's not what I need to do. You know, the only time you should look back on anything in your career is to see how far you've come. I don't want to look back on that fight and just dwell on the mistake that I made. That That's unhealthy for myself. So I'm glad that I got a fight booked. Cheers to Danny Rube. Cheers to the UFC. Um, and, 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 and I haven't even thought about it since since I've talked to you, but I don't okay. mind reliving it and, right, and talking right. about it because – it's, 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 it's a tough thing in the sport. You know, you're only as good as your last fight. And, uh, you know, when you're winning, you're the man. But when you lose, it's, uh, you know how MMA, MMA media can be. They can be pretty harsh on you. So, oh, I know. Um, I'm, and, glad I, I'm glad I didn't, get, I didn't, glad I didn't get beat down too bad in the media after that fight. Well, no, I think everyone respects you. You've been doing this, you know, almost a decade in the UFC. It's been an incredible run. And I, I feel like, you know, the run leading up to that point was great. And it's also credit to Luke, who we all know is a great fighter. It's not like you slipped on a banana peel and lost to a guy that everyone thinks is below you. But there is something to be said for confidence, right? It's been a while since you've gone into a fight coming off a loss, right? You were on that great winning streak. Do you feel a little different this fight week because you're not riding a winning streak? Not at all. My confidence is still running high. You know, if I, if I felt different because I'm riding into this fight week on a loss, that mean that there's there's a fracture in my confidence, and I'm I'm as confident as I was headed into the Luke a fight. I'm as confident as I was heading into the Neil Magny fight. My confidence is at, at an all time high. Um, you know, I had a good camp back at home, um, really blending the best of both worlds. And activity, being active this year also helped. It, it supplements that a lot. Knowing that this is my third fight in a calendar year, I haven't done that since I was like in my early twenties. You know, so it's wow. like. Being a guy that's been in the UFC for, for for ten years, it's like I still I don't feel like that. I still feel like I'm the the up and coming guy, you know. So my confidence is running high. Everything's normal, and I'm I'm glad to be fighting at the apex. I haven't got a fight at the apex yet, so I feel like this year I've got all three of my fights have been across all three landscapes you could possibly compete in. I got a fight in Abu Dhabi. I got a fight in a packed arena in Houston. Now I'm back at the apex, and I look at the apex like the tough gym. Like I'm going back to my roots. I'm going back to my roots when I put together that run in 2012 on the Ultimate Fighter. I'm going back to the small show, small cage, small crowd, uh, but big fight feels for sure. 
I love that. Actually, in the last 24 or so hours on your Instagram, you posted a picture that I think uh, another site made for like as a graphic of you we have the picture here we'll show it and you you wrote something like wow crazy it's just like a a side-by-side picture of you in 2012 and you in 2021 what do you see when you see this side by side (laughs) i see uh (laughs) well i see that i needed a barber that's for sure (laughs) come on i liked it i see a young kid man i look at that that picture I, that, I liked it too. You know, it just, it's funny that sometimes I got to be reminded that it's, that's how long I've been in the UFC and that's how long that this journey has been. Uh, but when I see that guy, I just, it just cracks me up. I just see this, the, the long hair, don't care the, the kid before the tough run, a lot of things going on in my life at that time too. I mean, uh, you know, you, you, you know, you watched the ultimate fighter, you knew what was going on headed into that competition. So I see, I see that picture and it brings back a lot of memories, some good, some bad, um, but you know, through the wins and losses and the hardships that I've been through in my life leading up to this point, I'm very proud of the man that I've become. So, uh, I look back at that picture with a little chuckle. Yeah. Also for me, what sticks out in addition to all of that and how far you've come, your physique is way better now than it was back 10 years ago. <laughs> right? Yeah. I, I finally hit the weight room, you know, and I, the funny thing is I had a full-time job leading up to my run on the ultimate fighter. So I never lifted weights. So once I, once I was able to quit my job and focus on this, I was able to hit the weight room a little bit. And I think it paid off. My physique was a little better. I'd say my, my manscaping is a lot better. Um, but I, I, I would be a liar if I said I don't miss having that long hair. I see Jorge Masvidal all the time with that luscious mane. And I'm like, man, you know what's funny too? Speaking of Jorge Masvidal. Yes. I remember when I fought him in 2013 when he handed me my first pro loss. I remember that he went to the commission and made this huge complaint about my beard. And I just think it's funny because look at, <laughs> look wow. at him now. <laughs> His beard is longer than mine. I just think that's hilarious. I'm like, hey, Jorge, my man. Come on. Crack me up. Wait, he, so wait, <laughs> did he want you to trim it? Yeah, yeah. You could go dig. There's an article he came, that came out where he's like, he's got to trim his beard before my fight. There's yeah. got to be nasty ringworms and staph yeah, infections yeah, yeah, yeah. or something in there. And I'm like, I'm like, Jorge, you're rocking. You're, we, we traded positions. Like now you got the long hair, the beard, and I'm over here looking a little more groomed yes, than you yes, are right yes, now. Yes, I, yes, think yes. It's, I think it's, I think it's hilarious. I actually remember this now that you mentioned it. I remember that story. Jorge is going to be on later in the program. So perhaps I'll ask him about this if he remembers as well. Hey, that's my guy. You uh, obviously you've come a long way, as you mentioned at the desk doing the analyst work. And I know for the longest time you wanted this, and for whatever reason they weren't giving you the shot. But now you're a regular <laughs> member of the the rotation. A, do you like it as much as you thought you would like it? Because this was something you really wanted to do. And B, what is the ultimate goal? Like, are you are you hoping to make that transition to the booth, like some of the others? Yes, one hundred percent. I love it, man. I I put. What's going on it's with like the hand behind many, you right now? Is someone trying to rat? What's happening over there? <laughs> Hello. That's, that's my coach. Right? Oh, okay. I was like, what, what is he trying uh, to tell us to wrap it up or what? No, I think he's trying to do the bunny ears or something. Uh, but no, I, I, just like many of the other guys, man, I put, I put my heart, my soul, everything into the sport. And I wanted to, I feel like I, I'm, a, I, I'm a human encyclopedia. You know, I've tested my skills on your show, you know, we've tested my skills and maybe I have come up short <laughs> myself. I know a lot about the sport. I have good knowledge, but I, uh, it's just something I've always wanted to do. You know, I, I grew up watching sports center and stuff and, and watching a lot of basketball with my dad. And I was always infatuated with the guys that were working the desk and doing the commentary. And I'd be a liar if I said, I don't remember hearing the booyahs and the, as cool as the other side of the pillow comments from guys like Stuart Scott. And, and not only did I want to be an athlete, but I want to be, part of the narrative for, for these fights as well. And, uh, and it's everything I, I, th- I thought it could be in more, but the end goal is to get in the booth and I know I'm going to get there at some point. I I've made, I, I'm pretty good about putting my nose to the grindstone and achieving my goals. And I know it's not easy to get up there with, with those guys. They're so good at their job. Like there are, there is definitely levels to it. Like being an analyst at the desk is challenging, but with the work that those guys have to do, to deliver the product that they give on fight night. It's a lot of work. And, uh, I, I have a lot, I, I have a long ways to go, but I'm on the right track. 
I think it's most important for me right now to just keep competing and focus on that. And I think that these things will come in due time. So someday I will be next to my man, DC and John Anik and, uh, you know, P Fizzle, Dr. Paul Felder, you know, and Laura Sanko, she does a great job as well. You know, I, I'm very happy to see her on contender series, just shining as a commentator. She does a phenomenal job. I know how hard she works. So in due time, I will be a commentator. But for now, I'm a fighter. Uh, you're also in commercials, that great commercial with Justin Gaethje. Whose house is that? Is that just like a house that they rented out or is it your or his house? That, that house was in LA. Ah, Actually, I had what a, a house. People, I have people, I have people that have friends of mine that have never been to my house that, you know, are like, is that really your house? I'm like, I wish. <laughs> I, I mean, I wish, but I, I also like my log cabin a lot. So, yes. I, you know, I don't, if I had to choose between the two, I'd probably take my log cabin over the house. But I do feel like after the commercial, it would be funny if I did put a koi pond in. Because everybody asked yes. about the koi pond. <laughs> was, it, was it tough to do? Or did you, did you guys nail that in one take? The acting is phenomenal between the two of you. I don't have one yet. Uh, it, it, wasn't, it wasn't super hard to do because, for one, it's, it, wasn't, it, was like, it was a be yourself type of yeah. commercial. It's not like I had to act and study a, a, this huge long script and and i had a great dance partner i mean working with justin gaethje that day we had a lot of fun man and i gotta say having to stare down that guy for hours upon hours every time i had to lock eyes with him i'm like i feel bad for these guys that gotta fight him because he uh he's a stone cold killer man <laughs> he's a stone cold killer but i had a blast working with him hope to do more stuff like that that was uh that was a lot of fun and the one thing a lot of people don't know is i actually had to take they put me in a sweater and jeans and it was like 105 degrees in the Valley in California. And the, the AC was off in that house and I was cooking. Like I literally was like, we had to keep taking my sweater off because it was gray and throwing it in the dryer. Cause I was just oh my God. dumping sweat. <laughs> well, now I will, uh, I'll never forget that. Now that I see uh, the commercial, almost every event, two last things before I let you go, if I can, um, you yeah. said, what's the scouting report on Sean Brady without giving away too much. You've watched him. You've had to analyze him. What's the scouting report on this guy? And maybe what are the weaknesses? Uh, you know, I'll tell you about Sean Brady. He doesn't have a single hole in his game. <laughs> okay. He's as tough as they, he's as tough as they come. He's, I mean, look, you got to pay respect to the camp first and foremost. I mean, Daniel Gracie, black belt, uh, you know, training in, in the same house is, is Paulie Felder when he's back home. You know, I know those guys are all well-prepared. Um, while I say he's very good at everything, I, I, I don't think he's really, really good at, at anything. I don't think he's a specialist. I just think he's really good everywhere. Um, and we do have a game plan, and I can't divulge it. Of course. Because I'm sure he could, he could potentially be watching this live on the other side of the, the residence in here in Las Vegas. <laughs> but I know I'm in for a tough test. I know, you know, these tough up-and-coming guys that are undefeated, they're no joke. I mean, they're the future of this division. You know, like I said, if you're going to bring up Hamzat Shemaev a lot, you got to bring up Sean Brady. You got to bring up Shabkat Rachmanov. You got to bring, you got to bring up all these tough undefeated guys because they are the future of this division. But the difference is my time hasn't passed yet. You know, I'm, I'm only 33 years old in terms of fight years. I don't have a ton of miles on me. I haven't been to the Blood wars. Um, you know, I'm a, I'm a tough test for this guy and he's a tough test for me. I just feel like I have the intangibles things beyond the X's and O's that are going to be the difference maker in this fight that are going to lead me to get my hand raised. Okay, and last thing for you, uh, other than yourself, it's your division, who has the best chance right now at 170 to beat Kamar Usman? Man, um, you know, I will say this, Leon Edwards, that, er, let, me, let me rewind, sorry, before I bring in Leon, Kamar Usman, as time has gone on, he has evolved into being a good striker working with Trevor Whitman has really rounded off his game. He is, he is dang near bulletproof across the board. If you look at his stats, he's a good wrestler. He's got great takedown defense, great striking, great wrestling ground skills. He's got it all. But being that he has fallen in love with his hands so much, I do feel like a guy like Leon Edwards could give him some problems. If Kamara strays away from the, from the game plan that he had to beat him the first time. So if it's a striking battle, I see Leon having some success. Pom, I mean, I'd be a fool if I didn't bring up Pom Tachimayev. I mean, we saw what he did to the leech. Uh, 
that was a phenomenal performance. To go out and pitch a shutout against a guy, any guy in the UFC that's in the rankings, that's, that's phenomenal in itself. I mean, there's a laundry list of guys at 170 pounds that could give the champ a tough run. But I think right now, I mean, you just got to bring up Leon Edwards because I think he's going to be the next guy. So between Leon, Hamzat, you know, I think that – and Shavkat Rachmanov. I mean, not a, lot, not a lot of people are talking about him. That guy's tough as heck. Like, if you talk – if you hear the rumblings out of Stanford MMA, I mean, his, his performances speak for itself. But if you hear what people are saying about what he's doing in the training room, that guy's legit. I mean – on any given day, anybody could go go in there and be throwing a champion. But um, you know, I think that those guys those guys are tough, and you know, that's excluding myself from the. Yes, equation. and I was going to say another day, <laughs> and I'll throw Michael Kiesa's name into that hat as well. So excited about this fight! What a great matchup! Respect you for taking the fight. Can't wait to see you back in there. You're the man, and again, thank you for for rocking the shirt. It meant a lot to me, Mike. I appreciate you very much, and I wish you nothing but the best on Saturday. Hey, thank you, Ariel. I love seeing you on this new platform. You're thriving. You're shining. 10-7 round. Any day of the week. In Hawaii. Let's go. Yeah, what a promo. Thank you, Mike. Good luck on Saturday.